Welcome to this new idea. I'm Conrad Myers, and I am here uh, with my guest, LA artist and animator, Clem Goldberg. Uh, welcome, Clem. Hi. How are uh, you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm okay. Hanging in there. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you uh, you just moved to LA not too long ago, right? Last summer. I moved in February. Mm -hmm. Oh, in this of oh, this February. That's right. This oh my February. God. You moved, then I moved. Yeah, I was the first to go. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with yourself? <laughs> yeah, I, do you want to be more specific or? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, what are you working on? You moved. You moved for a specific reason, or was it just a, a pile of reasons that forced the move? And then, yeah, I mean, I guess it's like was just sort of. Um, I guess there was a pile of reasons in the sense of like, the next project I want to make is a feature film, mm -hmm. and San Francisco, for many reasons, was becoming more and more difficult to live there as an artist. I mean, in saying that in 2020, like you could have said this for <laughs> decades at this point, but um, it just got to a point where I just needed, I guess, change maybe. Yeah. Um, and I kind of, I sort of made the decision over the summer and then in the fall, it became very clear to me. And then I started looking for a place like uh maybe in december uh and then nothing really worked out until um i found the spot that i'm in which was february it and looks so i didn't move on i moved in on like the seventh so it looks beautiful it's it's really a nice spot i um it's really funny because i was so excited this is really funny to say on the show. Maybe I shouldn't, but I just say it anyways. But I was so excited to have my own refrigerator. Oh, and I was okay. so overwhelmed by it. Um, <laughs> and I feel like over the years I've just had, I mean, progressively I've had like fluctuating amounts of space from uh -huh. living with housemates. And the most recent was like the least amount of space. So it was like part of a shelf and like one drawer. And then I had this whole refrigerator and freezer. Um and I was overwhelming, but then this all happened, and now it's got stuff in it. Lots of stuff. <laughs> all the things you need. The things I need, because I don't, you know, because I'm pretty much here all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, without getting too much into that, the project that you're working on um, is totally yours? I mean, it's a film, so it would be a lot of people sure. in an ideal world. For for I'm I'm Sisyphus right now with it, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a second draft of a script, and I've had some um, some friends read it mm -hmm. and give me feedback. Um, and I've had one of the actors that I want to cast read it and give me feedback. And then, and so now I'm trying to write a second draft. I'm so excited. Yeah. So well, you'll be roped in when it's time. Oh, great. Is, is it, is it, uh, animation mixture, uh, live action or mostly live action or all live black? I mean, I guess, <laughs> I mean, it was supposed to be all live action, mm -hmm. um, but then it's like, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe there will only be animated things from now on, which right. I guess would be my favorite on some level. <laughs> so I suppose it could be animated. Um, ideally, it's live action. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's supposed to be live action. Oh, good. Good. Um, do you want to do you want to talk anything about it? Do you want to think think through it out loud at all? Can I um, coax you into that? Sure. I mean, what's the like structure of this new idea? What it's, happens? The, oh, there show? there is no structure on my show. I it's a I structure for the show. Yeah, I I mean, my goal is to try to uh, find that spot where you can't put things to words, and stay there. Uh, with a friend. That's it. I mean, that's, that's funny on a talk show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, it is. I mean, we that's uncomfortable. Uh, we hit a comfortable silence when we sort of achieved the goal of the show. I, it was, I think it, it, it's actually my second 
list of um, desirable notes that I made for myself before I ever had one of these, which was that it, it, it silence will be okay. I, it's it's in there. So if if uh, if we reach that, I think that's pretty good. But I I I like being tongue tied trying to talk about a new thing. Uh, I, like I like that discomfort, that. and I uh, I don't have a goal. Um, I, mean, I think it's good it's not a podcast because dead air, you know, that would get you into trouble. But I see, like, for you as a visual artist, this makes more sense that it's like, you know. Yeah. Well, but also, uh, this is a hopefully people that like watching people have a conversation. I mean, I, I think that's the other thing is is um, I missed having conversations with people. And for, for, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Presumably, yeah, we, we conversations would. Conversations yeah. with people, can you have, like, what is your capacity for like day to day do you have a certain amount of conversations that you can have is it or do you feel like wiped out how's that working for you and how's it working like video versus phone call oh you mean right now what am i what am i what is my capacity or what is my goal like where are you at in the day to day of shelter in place and and like where we are in society right now uh i'm i just spoke with my null students for the last time today uh, which was a half hour a week. <laughs> uh, we spread out what would have been our last class with uh, two, five, you know, five classes that were shorter, uh, just so okay. that because their whole their whole project changed. Um, outside of that, you know, uh, not too much. Uh, Willis works two or three days a week. Still, uh, she, she works at a pharmacy in um, San Francisco. So uh, Willis has been hopping on the ferry and. Mas masking up and gearing up and going there and then coming back here. Um, and I largely have been writing, um, preparing for this sort of thing, cleaning up a lot of loose ends, applying for a lot of grants. Mm -hmm. So I maybe talk to people an hour a day when mm -hmm. I'm not doing this. This doubles it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Double, double the speaking, you know. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's it's a weird time. I had, I you know, it was just recently my birthday, so I had a bunch of... Um, people reach out and so that was a nice thing to happen during the uh the weird silence but you know i mean we're in this this amazing house that we were lucky enough to rent um yes happy and, birthday again when did you moved because you got dislocated from your space in you moved july when? yeah we, we we started renting the space in the middle of july in the middle of what july July. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you've had since the summer. Yeah. And I didn't, I, I went right into another job and things right. were a scramble until late December. So I didn't even yeah. really get comfortable here until then. But then when this all happened, the, f I mean, the first two weeks, we just started crossing off projects. Okay. So, you know, getting yeah, more. We getting... The night in December, like November, December around yeah. then. And well, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Um, I like your post about it. Oh it's yes, like, yeah. Very reflective. Um, it's time. It's always time for that. Yeah, I feel like I'm. I'm connecting with friends, but I really feel like to do conversations. I can do longer phone conversations than uh -huh. I can do the like face calls. But like. Sometimes the face calls feel really good too, you uh -huh. know, just especially because I live by myself and I haven't, I'm definitely not getting my daily hugs. Ah, uh, yes. That for sure. So I just sort of took up with a pine tree for a bit and then I feel like it became a very popular pine tree. So right. I just was like, maybe this isn't <laughs> your, your pine tree. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. There was like I I take my 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 constitutional um, and I just there was sort of like a ceremonial situation of like um, flowers and sort of like pattern designs like under this tree. Mm -hmm. I it just made me feel. I mean, it was near. It's kind of close to a, a house that's being built, which is under construction, but. I don't know. It's just sort of like a tree you can get to, you know, yeah. if you wanted. And it's a, it's a good looking tree. And that's why I was, that's why I took up with it. But <laughs> just made me feel like, oh, this is probably like the people's tree. So right. I, you know, I know how long the, you know, I mean, this whole circus thing. 
a tree. How long does does it stay on a tree? And there's all these jogger, unmasked joggers, the unmasked joggers. <laughs> yeah. That's what we learned about. Yeah, the unmasked joggers. You know, but I, I think it's also just like the cruelty of the moment just makes it so, for me right now, it's been hard to be creative. It's hard to have phone calls and sustain focus. Um it's been it's been a hard time to be creative. I'm trying to like come up with different strategies, but I'm also doing freelance work, a lot of work. Uh-huh. So I don't. It might just be the the balance of that. Right. What kind um, of stuff are you working on? Editing stuff, writing stuff. Yeah, I'm just doing like editing and motion graphics for okay. you know, two different clients right now, and I'm gonna track down some more. Um, but that's good. That's all. I doubled my rent. Yay! Alone, which is nice, and I have trees. Yeah, I have trees. Well, light well, so. Oh, that's right. Oh, my God. Yeah, I feel the same way. I, it's uh, the I I would take night walks in West Oakland and mm-hmm. just it's just you walk at a pace and you're nervous the whole time. Mm-hmm. No matter what, even though I never had an incident at night, mm-hmm. all my incidents were daytime. But mm-hmm. uh, this place is, um, all, you know, all of our neighbors, the neighbors are always out. Everybody's either like most of the neighborhoods already retired. Cause that's kind of where we are. It's a lot of retired artists <laughs> and, um, you know, a retired artist that bought their houses when, when the, the army base shut down in the late nineties. So there are people that, oh. you know, are older. Um, right. and then a few immediate neighbors that are a little bit, uh, more lively and, uh, working from home. But you know, okay. we, we, everybody goes out and stands 12 feet apart and talks about gardening. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I, if I, the, if I decide to become a maskless jogger, which happens, I don't see anybody. There's nobody out. I don't run past anybody. There aren't right. cars. Right. Like it's, it's such well, a, yeah. it's such I mean, a you're sleepy not, place. You're not the rogue unmasked jogger. Right. Say that. If there's no one around. But I did, you know, I did, I helped a friend out in San Francisco a few days ago. And that was the first time I was in San Francisco since this, mm. since probably Geez, might have been around the same time you were last there. I mean, it was probably mm-hmm. March, early March. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I couldn't believe the volume of people in the mission. It was like financial district. There was nobody like down all the way down Market Street. It was relatively slim, you know, uh, kind of a few people that were out struggling, but and police officers. And then second I got to uh, like, you know, ha- the Dolores Park, like 18th, it was um, just people walking around. I and mean, a lot of people had masks on, a lot of people didn't, but a lot of people out. Like, mm-hmm. I got I got closer to, you know, more people in that half-hour walk than I got in the prior six weeks. Were you, like, in your mind, were you just, like, a vector among vectors and you had all the models in your head? Mm, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think I, I – well, because of being here, I, I have the tendency to, like – you know, you see somebody, if you do see somebody on the sidewalk, like one of you walks into the street because you don't right. have to worry about cars so much. So I was just doing that in a place yeah. with cars going by. Right. And, because you just, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go shoulder to shoulder with somebody. But I, I didn't want to do that. I so. found myself really like compartmentalizing, I think, to get like work done. And then um, I don't know if you've seen, but the stud has been doing a bunch of drag, like has been doing drag shows and nice. a lot of the drag artists have been doing performances on Twitch. Uh-huh. Um, and then once I started watching those, it was like, I just reconnected with San Francisco <laughs> and then I was a mess. <laughs> it was like, yeah. oh, uh. no I have those. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I've been kind of doing this dance of like, you know, working and then at night, you know meeting my emotions again right so now i'm i'm trying to like put that together into sort of a more regular regulated i'm having emotions and i'm working and like all those things Mm. coexist you know so that's sort of been that's my new my new space and then as i have these like lags in when i turn something in and i wait edit some things Mm -hmm. like that's when i'm trying to make the push on my script Oh, nice. Um, but the project rubs up very close to to what's happening, and it's like it's a buddy story, and you're familiar with my work mm-hmm. about extinction for the most part um, yeah. and grief, uh, and so this is kind of, this is a buddy story, 
and it's about um, these trans protagonists that have an opportunity to create a space or spaces where part of their community can kind of exit uh-huh. um, and just sort of like be off the grid in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's at a time when things have become futile. Um, right. But it's also, I don't know. I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot to think about, but it, it sort of takes the path of like all these, all these horrible things happen, happen. And I don't, I don't know how much to like put on the, well, how much are you supposed to say about a project when it's so new? I, I mean, there, there, are, there have been people I've invited to do this that said they won't do it in part because they're not ready to talk about anything that they don't want to talk about anything that isn't figured out. But I think that's what I'm after. Okay. I, I, I like the idea of me mentioning something or you mentioning something that ends up being totally abandoned mm-hmm. six months from now. Uh, or you could look back upon and say, oh, gee whiz, that, that was the little spark to this much better idea that I had later. I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I've, I, been I've, applying for, I've been applying for um, different things. I've gotten rejections so far. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, I'm curious what this next round will be like to have people reading my project and about my project now yeah. <laughs> you know um but i have had to change jokes because they just play completely different now right um, i had a lot of n95 type humor i oh, think wow. from just going through the paradise um fires uh-huh. that those three weeks of not even being in paradise or like directly impacted other than the smoke mm-hmm. in the city but just seeing how unprepared the city was how air air seems like a great equalizer in a way you right. know um and yeah and that experience of wearing masks and air changing i i thought a lot about you know the the air quality index and and as more fires happened feeling like old hat about it and like oh i just moved this to the front of my phone and i have math and this is how you handle this and um but I never, in in focusing on these kinds of things, that you can, I mean, anyone can see any of this stuff coming. You know, it's like the right. articles about insect apocalypses, pandemics, uh, you know, ice is melting, climate change, and all these things are happening, and nothing has changed. There, the Green New Deal has not happened yet. Yeah. Like nothing has changed politically to change that course of inevitable things, right? Mm-hmm. And then you watch industrial countries and their air quality and, what, and how they have to live you uh-huh. know and they can't go outside and, and these different things so i saw certain things coming it just never occurred to me that we would be in a situation where we actually can't physically be together right you now it's one of those unimaginable horrors and it's similar to like when bolsonaro came into power i for some reason, I just had this really like antiquated view of how the Amazon rainforest would be raised, despite working on a project about Madagascar for many years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like I, I know Slack and Burr, and I know about that, but for some reason, I just thought there was going to be like a row of you know like tractors and construction equipment, and we you know, and we would receive a call, like an international call, to come down there, and you know, and then we would like stand in front of the indigenous populations and whatever. I just right. did not agree with me that they would set the whole thing on fire. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so then it's like that just reading about um the notion that like lungs are about where we hold our grief and that I was reading a lot about when um the Amazon was on fire and when Australia was on fire and January and um, and then now we have this additional sort of um, pandemic, which is also like respiratory and lung based. Right. You know, so it's just we're all, I think, in this dire grief moment, and and either we change course or we don't. You know, it's amazing what's happening with oil. I, I just don't know. It's just such we get these opportunities to change mm-hmm. and change course. I mean, same thing with like when this first happened i don't know i've also and i'm curious about i feel like i've been on a long diatribe here but i i am curious about your take on this but like 
you know, it's very different in New York. I can't really fathom what it is to be there. And I think in a way I was sort of preparing for that to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I was preparing for that to be everywhere, like in March, maybe. Like, I just thought it was all going to be this sort of, like the anticipation of the grief was escalating with, um, I guess, a lot of news intake in those first couple weeks. Right. And it's been this, like, protracted thing as we flatten the curve. Mm -hmm. But I also could see, as anybody anybody could, that the places that were most at risk were going to be, from watching what was happening in Italy, it was going to be nursing homes, prisons and jails, and ICE detention facilities. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed obvious that they needed to just end ICE open everyone out of detention immediately mm-hmm. that they needed to relocate everybody from the prisons and jails if not just i mean obviously the real criminals are in charge <laughs> so what is this construct right yeah um so i mean it's not my politics on prison abolition haven't changed but watching what's happening in nursing homes too like i don't know it's just we're in this like unparalleled cruelty and then on top of that somehow there's this like anticipated grief protracted grief right and how time like gender was such a construct but fucking time yeah so i don't know how i, I threw a lot at, at <laughs> and the conversation so that was kind of a long no it's fantastic you know i i i, I uh i'm like assembling the four different tracks to go on uh in <laughs> <Sorry>. my head <laughs> um i I think disciplinary, you can do it. my favorite thing that you said about that is that air air quality is the the, the equalizer, mm. um, and that's that's something that is very a very Californian thing to say. Having just gone through what we just went through these last two years in a row, or the last two fire seasons, and to really know like that, like the fact that they were shutting us down and shutting the power off. Um, out of a way to protect us we got like that's why california is a little bit ahead of this than everybody else because we just went through what it's like to have to tell your whole population to cool your jets for a little while we're, we're going to do this for the greater good um, yeah and you know and now we're in this situation where all these states are reopening that are completely unprepared for what the consequences of that are and it's true i um, may have been the first person to make a mask for mask joke yeah right <laughs> Right, but uh, it, uh, but you know, I I think the 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 thing that still worries me is how poorly the data is treated, even in reputable news organizations. Oh yeah. Um, that that things are there's a um, there's a a death rate and a uh, you know there, we're dealing with multiple rates right so the rate with which you contract it the rate with which you get sick from contracting it the rate with which you die from that sickness and you can work your way backwards from how many people are dead like how many people died today you can work your way backwards to two to three weeks ago how many people had it mm-hmm. and from that point look at how wrong your numbers were then and then mm. use how wrong those numbers are to augment today's numbers and predict where things are going to be in three weeks. Like it's a really simple mathematical equation. And nobody was doing that in late March, including New York City. Uh, you know, but it, 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 was really, it was really easy to predict how bad it was going to get right away. That, yeah. Like the fact that they had a thousand people in the hospital today you know means that x amount of people had it which means that today when you think only 2000 people have it it's now it's actually 12000 people have it today you just aren't testing for that which means that 2 weeks from today you're going to have six times more oh, you know it's like like yeah, the math just starts to the compound. exponential growth rate things like the mathematicians were sort of putting those out in early february too yeah you know, and then it's like but it's like the way this loops into environmental injustice Right. You know, and it's like, and the rates, you know, whether it's Navajo Nation um, or New York City or whatever, it's like the people who can't get clean water, who have had air that's poisonous, who have respiratory issues because of that. It's right. the way that like cuts through and still relates to like this same level of corporate greed and extraction and treating this planet like it is, it's just a source of 
um, I don't know. I can't get into the logic of what it is to have no emotions and to be a sociopath or a psychopath. And I understand that that's how capitalism functions and that's what CEOs are. Like that's who becomes a CEO. Right. And so we just have too many corporations and too many of of those. Right. Right. And we all knew that like, I mean, we know, I, I just, I hope some takeaways happen and I hope that one of the takeaways is that billionaires should not exist because this is an immediate example of why there is no trickle down. There's nothing. Right. They're monsters. Yeah. You know, it's, there should be a cap and it rolls back over. It just shouldn't even be. I mean, yeah. capitalism is just a gnarly Frankenstein monster that is just laid bare right now. So I hope that is also, you know, demonstrated. And I hope that the people who, I mean, it's a lot like to hear meat plant, meat plant, meat plant, but like, the fact that we have all of these workers and that now that person in office is going to do the defense defense production act Mm -hmm. to like have people go to work without protective gear and then protect the bosses. Like, I just hope we're about to just be in this time of a green new deal. And then that that, that no one wants to be a Republican anymore, that the only Republicans left are, it's still 30%. I mean, we're still in this position. Is that why they dropped the UFO videos? Is that, is like, yeah, right. <laughs> finally that moment where it's like, yeah. they go and they, they actually, you know, the conspiracy theories were right and they were reptiles. I don't know. Yeah. You know, why did they drop that footage right now? I was like, the, it was like uh, when, when, when the day Trump declared it's an, a national emergency, Bill Gates left the Microsoft board. You know, it was like, it's like stuff like that. It's like, it's like, oh shit, now's my chance. You know, like that's it, it's. I think maybe that's just it, or maybe it's you know to rile up conspira- conspiracy folks. But I, again, it's like their conspiracy folks are so focused in on the things that aren't conspiracies that they're missing the big ones. I mean that, and I just look at these images, and it's like everyone's saying, you know, I can watch any of this, and I can't not think of Ferguson watching these things, right. and just what a difference. You know, I mean, since the seventies, to be a Black Panther, you know, it's like. To watch that disenfranchisement progress to like a crime syndicate and to be where we're at, but the that rates that we are watching these white supremacist people with guns harassing legislators, like right. I mean, it, I don't know how we see all the problems, we see the cages, we see that it's just completely this imagined structure, right? right? Like this is what we've created but we have many more people that would create something else and so i don't like how many people are resistant to creating something else and are they the people with guns unmasked and demanding to reopen america can we just see like that's that's it this is who it is i think the rest of us do not want them i mean i think we're we're gonna start to get into a position where people that were relying on the idea of being able to have a good job are gonna find out that that's not necessarily worth it right now and i think well, once that and the small businesses right that like yep. black people like you know people like people who cannot get loans can't get credit it's yeah. weird I'm like we're living in like the 1950s we're living in like jim crow shit like yeah. can i use bad language and are we gonna yeah it's okay. good. you're not gonna take um, it away you know it's like we're just living nothing's you know so in a way it's just like yes this is america right so Mm -hmm. this is this is america but it's we're just it's just so cruel right now is such a cruel time yeah it's gonna get worse and i think a lot of the a lot of these people that that are backing you know i mean it's 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 it's, i i i don't think we're gonna have a revolution because i don't think we're made for it i think for the Mars, for the most part, Americans have been kind of lulled into a sense of weakness, um, and I think the only people that think they're strong aren't, and are maybe even the weakest of all. And I, I think things are going to be complicated for a long time. That that would be my guess. Um, I would hope that politically there's a takeover that can accomplish some things, but I think how that is, that's how is there not just an arrest for crimes against humanity? Like right. these are like Nuremberg trial level. We all yeah. know he reads Hitler. Like yeah. they, they all love Hitler. But this is what they're just doing it in this other way. That I know when we move forward in time and look back, you'll just see. 
Right, but I think... I think yeah, real time, too. I guess I'm just talking about, like, that time lag. But I don't know. The revolution thing, I, I just... If more people can get on board with prison abolition and jails and prisons closed, that would be a time to hit the streets. But I also know there's so much, like weaponry from the military that they've given to cops and they keep slipping like money to cops in these right. moments yeah that's the, the they're talking about like, why are we taking care of, like why are leaders people who hate people right <laughs> you hate people and you hate the planet and you just think they're a resource right why are you leading yeah or i mean again it's that it's what you went back to it's the, the people that are sociopaths or psychopaths yeah i mean the people that people that think that their value um i you know i always can't get over how like i understand that uh if you're bringing jobs like if you're if you're doing something that generates jobs that there's a great value in that but that, it doesn't mean that you're worth four thousand times a normal person you know like like i just i don't understand how value the value of being a human being could ever be related to money well, if yeah, they're I incompatible. Know, the they've got one point seven million dollars yeah. in their stimulus. Why everybody, you know, other sure. people are all getting twelve hundred dollars if they fit into a certain criteria. <laughs> right, you know? and you know, like, and like today was the first day. Uh, it finally the system uh, opened up that I could actually check and see how things are going. Like I was mm -hmm. being rejected from even finding out how things were going or if it had my right information until this morning. So oh, the, 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 the stimulus the check. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know. If, I don't know Those if you got yours, mm -hmm. but today was like for those of us that were for whatever reason sidelined. Mm -hmm. uh, today was the it, it, it came through an email and broke ass Stuart the um, the oh. blog of San Francisco and Willis was like oh we can check today because I of that I, got, I, I had checked and it was like not happening yeah like rogue and then yeah yesterday. I was able to do it. Right. So, but I mean, you know, I, I, I just, it was now $1.7 million. <laughs> yeah. Which boy, if we all got $1.7 million, what wonderful things we could do. You right. know, I'm loving like the younger politicians who are just like mint the money, you know, like, yeah. Right. Why not? If they can make it up and they can just do billions, like let's just, Let's do it. I, I mean, think we that, can just make much better things. And it's so heartbreaking to see artists get turned down for funding. It's like, why can't it just be yes? Yeah. You well, know, I, everyone... there may be something happening with that, uh, which we can talk about afterwards. But th there, I've gotten some behind the scenes news that I don't know if I want to. I, I, I definitely can't make. Mine make is more people flipping upfront news of just like knowing friends in San Francisco who are brilliant. Yeah you know, not getting funding. Right. Well, I, I, yeah, uh, there's, I mean, there's some hope there, I guess. But I like, I, I mean, just be like purely capitalistically, right? If you dump money into the hands of people right now, they'll spend it. Like mm -hmm. that's like people want to spend money. They're stuck at home. Like everybody will be putting their money into getting a new video game or getting a new book or get, getting a new food. Like, why, like, like, like yeah. It, yeah, if you're really afraid of the economy crashing, give people money to spend. It'll get back should, to them. They should your market and say, like, here's your fun money, and then, like, here's right. your rent. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, I mean, people have been doing universal basic income research and work. Like, like so many people have seen this coming. I think it just wasn't in this form. Right. You know, um, and I do, I think you're right. I think we had a really great opportunity in San Francisco and in California with fire season to have, to have a sense of what happens when things turn like that. Yeah. Um, and I remember people could make it a couple of weeks and then it was, and then I just saw more and more people outside, you know, despite the air quality level being hazardous and like, you know, the scarier respirator uh, icons on yeah, those yeah. apps. And, stuff, and I just was like, okay, so it's that equation of like, I can I can avoid this, but then I think it was that like pack of cigarettes a day, or for every amount of hours, it's like a pack of cigarettes. And that's right. like, and I'm not talking about the people that like had to work or had to be outside for some reason. It was more like people playing, you yeah. know, in the streets or just like walking their dogs and hanging out and in parks and, and that kind of thing. And I and I think it it was a sense of like how long um, can people defer 
the pleasure of this of this place but i think it's like that said i think that's a really good metric that if people can internalize that Mm -hmm. and then make that a priority in their voting in their day-to-day and just realize that like if we don't change things this is what it is like and i think i i had a i had a moment with my project where i was like i just didn't know anymore if the project was in poor taste I, uh-huh. Like I just couldn't tell, and huh. I and that took a while, took a, a bit to creatively get past. But and then I realized, like, no, like this really is what this is. It's mm-hmm. it's there are just going to be consistently these disaster moments. Usually, they're not happening across the world at the sa- at the same time. Right. But it's just, and we ha- we're not through the moment of like fire season, hurricane season, with this going on. Um, you know, we knew that FEMA had been stripped out. We knew that these things had been dismantled. Like none of this is mystery information, but by having people who do not believe in science decimating every protection, rolling back the EPA, like the first time when the, when the government, in that other government shutdown, when they use it as an opportunity to like drill and frack, and then this time to have all the oil executives sit around a table and be the first ones to get COVID tests. Right. You know, like, I just hope people can internalize, like, this stuff in a very basic way for those that are not in the, like, I cannot fathom what it's like to be a frontline worker in a hospital right now. Like, they're, they're in a whole other level of grief that I, I, I'm not even addressing. I'm just saying for, like, the day-to-day citizen who either is, like, having to go to work and come home, mm-hmm. who probably already has these politics, but for the people who are, like, lucky enough to work at home, mm-hmm. you know, or you know whatever it is but i just like i hope there's this like really vast internalizing moment where we can see that this is not an isolated thing and it's not going to be over when the run is over Mm -hmm. like even when we have a vaccine that's great but we're gonna have to deal with the repercussion of extraction yeah you know and we're and it's gonna come due and we can either keep staving it off and have little disasters here and there all over for the rest of our lives but it's not we're not going to get back like, well, there's no going back from here. It's just mitigating suffering and making the best world we can with what we've got. Right. And, and I hope, you know, I know scientists now are, like, listening to whales underwater for the first time, to, like, to see, not the, not that they're listening for the first time, but that, like, without other noise going on. So they're oh, like, yeah. what do whales do when there's not a bunch of traffic in the ocean? Right. You know, but it's like, whatever. We've all been seeing beach whales. We, I mean. The empty we, container ships we in the. Not. The empty you know, all of this, I, I don't exactly understand, you know, how, I mean, I guess it's like environmental destruction is what caused somehow the, like, the animal illnesses to be bouncing to the people. There's something about the way nature and, um, and the people are rubbing up against each other that is sort of this, like, pandemic moment, but that's just one problem. We've got a lot of problems, Conrad, a lot of problems. I was just going to say that the San Francisco Bay is completely full of empty container ships. There must be 15, mm-hmm. uh, which is, again, like another, you know, they're just anchored in the, like, off of Hunter's Point. Whoa. And uh, it's so bizarre to see. And, and um, you know, Willis is seeing a whale once a day, pretty much, in the bay. Wow. They're just playing in the ferry, in the ferry um, wake. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh you know, we've been taking the ferry a long time. We've never seen anything that she pretty yeah. much once a day, like or one in one one direction or the other. Um, I mean, if you can't tell, my film's a comedy. Yeah, <laughs> like your last one. It's a comedy yeah. until until the end. Well, they are. They are. Oh they're yeah. Just, you know, they're dark comedies about you know grief. Are there? Is there? Is there any movement on? Um, are you, Are you going to perform? Uh, the, I, I, my, I'm like blanking on the name of it. The last. Future ends. I'm sorry. <laughs> our future ends. Uh, yeah, our future ends. Are you? Is I mean that that now would be a good time to. Uh... See, but you know, it's interesting. Well, it was it was up um, at a Cal. It was at Worth Rider Art Gallery as part uh-huh. of an alumni show, and then they had to close the show. So I had right. like I cut a ten minute uh, piece from it uh-huh. and had it up, and then that was in that was in February. But 
You know, it's an interesting thing. I've thought about putting excerpts of it online or maybe doing some kind of live event or like make it a fundraiser or something. But I think it's a, that project right now has a strange context to it that I think not seeing the piece in its entirety might read strange just right. in the same way that like I'm changing jokes in this current script and things. I think right. it's really, it's a project that we have to have the whole thing. And if you have, parts of it it just might read wrong have you considered ever making a feature out of that mixture yeah oh yeah i mean i i would love to make a feature out of that film i was trying to get um someone to produce it mm -hmm. when it was sort of more when it was like up at the red cat and stuff i mean something i'd still love to do i'd love to keep the animation and then turn the live performance into live action. Yeah. Like a science fiction live action. Um, I, there's like great locations out there and I've got oh, to yeah. work with different people and, you know, I'd love to do that project. I just, it wasn't happening. I mean, that was part of the move from San Francisco, I think was that the project just was not, we performed it three times. I understand that like performance is very different than film. Right. And I think that was really hard for me because only a certain amount of people get to see the work and then it's really different to record it and share that. It was such a different experience than mm -hmm. a live performance. Um, and I guess, you know, it takes something really big to take off or maybe it has less people in it. I mean, this only had three performers it wasn't like and they're you know like we really strategized to make it tourable but right. it's still so expensive to put up and for theater i guess um i don't know i applied for things i didn't get them mm -hmm. i didn't ever i didn't write like a feature script for it yet but i think if it i think i'm moving on to this project and then if i do this then maybe someone will be like yeah let's do that um, and either I'll use the same animation or be able to like have the funds to really blow out what I started. Would you ever consider um, the live action parts as animation? It, maybe in a different style or a, a, oh, a different yeah, sort of compliment? Like record the voices or use the voices and yeah, do that? Yeah, I mean, it would be something that could be accomplished. Uh, in a in a different way. It, I mean, obviously, it would have a totally different effect than than the live action, uh, or the a yeah, live action or live I mean, piece of work. It's it is possible. I mean, it's definitely possible. I'd be open to it. It yeah. wasn't something that I mean. I think the thing is, is like the performers, and it has been a changing cast. But like those performers are so fun to see as performers and you can yeah. see their faces and like how they perform i love their faces their voices their bodies the movement mm -hmm. the idea of like you know i like that partnered with the animation so it's like sort of keeping those beautiful people who are amazing to watch like at a full remove i feel like you you kind of the audience misses out a bit mm -hmm. if you know if they were in sort of like and i also think margaret could make amazing outfits you know like right. real costumes and to see that in like yeah I, and i love film you know i really love live action uh -huh. so i'm not saying definitely no but i think it could be you know this really like stellar science fiction situation oh yeah if somebody can like even an independent science fiction thing like it could be a low budget thing to do um yeah. i just could not get it off the ground and even wanting to do different things with the music and do more like just nothing i applied for happened so right. i just moved, moved on it wasn't wasn't happening something tells me that the subject matter post covid would be um yeah a, a, well, a, well, more I mean, of interest about grief right and it's mm -hmm. about getting grief out of out of the body and it seemed really important for the queer community and artists um and now i think there's just a wider swath of people that yeah might connect to the material mm -hmm. in a different way um and and can access it's a good it, there's more of an entry point for a lot more people probably now so yeah maybe maybe time and space are catching up and people will be like oh yeah that was good let's let's do something with that I know I'm here it's, for it. I don't think it's you know fucking crushing. I think things are aging okay, you know. Yeah, that that piece of work, Clem. Holy moly! It's a, it's 
just fucks people up for like an hour afterwards. It's a good one. Um, I, I did I did prepare a quote that I didn't read on some advice uh, to not read not start these shows off with a direct quote so as to scare off any potential audience members, which I, I, I think is a really good thing. Um, but it does um, it, it's it talks about this is a, a section about repetitive uh, historical movement and ideas. Um, <clears throat> And, and it also reflects animal behavior, so I thought you'd like that. Uh, this is same okay, from, I like it. This is Ooh, from this... What is it? What is it? What are we looking at? It's the same book that I keep quoting everything from. Well, not everything, mm-hmm. but it's Arthur Kessler's The A- uh, Act of Creation, which I started reading in blurbs uh, again once I began to love this idea of doing this show. Um, and it just, t- it just talks about everything from humor to science to art um, to writing and how... how brain focuses um it's a lot of uh philosophy uh, philosophical reference a lot of psychology reference um but it's it's thick uh and so just pulling out these little chunks of quote are uh, pretty incredible so I, I won't read this for too long hopefully okay so this is Learloff and displacement uh towards the rigid end of the scale we find reflex like matrices exemplified in the so-called Learloff activities this term too was coined by lorenz The current English translation is vacuum activity, but freewheeling would perhaps be more appropriate. Seagulls reared in isolation will perform on the stone floor of the laboratory. Their characteristic tap dance, which under normal circumstances would serve to bring small animals to the surface of the tidal mud. Cats will go through the motion of burying their feces on kitchen tiles and hand reared young flying squirrels when given nuts will go through all the motions of burying them in the bottom of the wire cage and then go away uh, contented even though the nuts were exposed to full view. The same author describes the behavior of hand-reared tawny owls, which after being fed would act as if pouncing upon living prey, though it had never had the experience of dealing with a living mouse. Displacement is the performance of behavior pattern out of the particular function, functional context of behavior to which it is normally related. A dog in its restraining harness is a Pavlov-type laboratory while expecting the fall of food from the container will stamp, yawn, and paint, activities which do not belong to his normal feeding behavior. But what else, one may irreverently ask, can the poor, excited creature do? Pale-fed calves will suck the ears or navels of their companions as infants suck their thumbs. Some birds play elaborate games, throwing up and catching sticks. So do puppies. Kittens will pretend that a ball of wool is a mouse. Learloff and displacement thus comprise a broad range of activities which occur in the absence of the proper stimulus, or in the presence of normally inadequate Erstaz stimuli, or when the proper response is for some reason blocked. Its human equivalents range from playful activities to repetition compulsions in the formation of neurotic Erstaz symptoms. So I guess I was I was kind of looking for a quote that that related to this idea of trying to find a rhythm in this form of uh an upended world um oh yeah i mean i feel like that's us right like the world is gone it's like we were warned it was gonna be gone i mean the world the planet's here but like the world socially societally is gone and so we are you know burying our acorns in cages yeah like i think I don't know, I was thinking about the flamingos that have been walking around the zoos and the penguins that have been walking around. And zoos have always been troubling for me. They were troubling for me, you know, um, when I was working on the lemur project. And um, But at the same time, it's like that's where wilderness still exists. Mm-hmm. You know, like how we've been living and destroying. We, have, we still have these fleeting things. And, and I'm so sad for generations that you know, we'll just have that sort of subjective, like, elephant, not a, you know, that will only exist in media, you know, and and I thought, and I think a lot about expansion aesthetics, and, like, will we start to just wear more animal prints, and integrate it into, like, how we dress and talk, and we'll just, we will wear the wilderness, because it's not gonna, once these creatures go extinct, and they're gone, but it's, like, every day there's extinctions, right, but Mm -hmm. now it's, there was not there, well that's i mean the project i'm working on now mm. is i'm basically making our future end again i just got rid of the metaphor oh okay 
So now it's about people going through this. So I just, I took away the stopgap, you know, because maybe I do talk about things with like four things going on at once, you know, <laughs> and so I'm just going to dial a little more direct, you know. Um, but make it funny. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, add the magic to it. But no, I think, I think that's a wonderful quote. I think that that's... I, I have passed this like Bernie sign on my on my walk every day. Like it's still up in someone's yard, and it's just sort of becoming this sort of stand-in for like a kind of nostalgia or like what are they still hanging on or is it like just becoming an art piece now? You right. know, it's really an interesting. It's an interesting sign to keep coming across, and then I also it's sort of like the gift of running across a hummingbird and knowing mm. that they're endangered, but the magic of seeing one. Oh yeah. You know, um what's the motion i mean i think that with the bernie sign similar to like going through the motions of hopefulness like trying to find that inviting factor right now when things are just so despicably sad every day right um, so like a musical number that's like let's go i think i don't think that that's gonna work for people right in this moment you know even right. though it's not actually saying that yeah you know? i just think it's not it's not the cat doll, but I do think the deer in between works quite well for right now. Yeah. I think that kind of, for whatever reason, the the mushrooms and deer kind of wrestling with these questions. Um, I don't know. That project kind of works. I'm okay with that one. Yeah. I think the other one's going to be a taller order, but it will we'll be a good moment. There will be a moment for it, for people that want to ask it, but I'm just not sure how. Um what the medium will be or what that means and i also think that i'm trying to figure out if i should make a lighthearted something <laughs> you know like a very like it's joy right joy and hope are the things that are like the to the counterbalance right of the yeah. of the group i've sort of taken on like casually learning astrology uh -huh. uh, do you remember Larry Arrington, the choreographer yeah, from yeah. Future End? So Very much. she's this, an amazing astrologer and has a Patreon. And so you can like join her monthly stuff and she has a workbook. And um, so I've been, that's been my sort of joy. Oh, nice. Joy thing is, is just like the stories, you know, and astrologers have been so on with all of this. It's, it's like, it's been almost more reliable than the news at this point. So wow. I'm sort of like looking at those dates. Mm, keeping track <laughs> yeah so it's it's an interesting time uh, are you are you do you have a practice right now or are you being just this creative in a busy way? no just I mean, this, this is, obviously this is your practice and this is creative and... uh, i mean you know i'm 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 uh splitting my time into thirds on like trying to re re get my life organized uh which is taken a multi-year break um and then trying to search out for exactly what what i want to continue uh mm -hmm. doing with my life what what direction yeah. i want to take it and then um uh, you know this this work and aggregates you know aggregates work is in there too you know we're, we're applying for grants and um yeah trying to figure out what what's going to happen when when all this uh, undoes or redoes, um, you know, I, I, as somebody that um, loves museum experiences and theater experiences and ex and cinema experiences, the, the you know, emoting with a, a group of people um, that all are, are feeling the same thing at the same time or variations on that same thing at the same time, uh, I don't know. I don't know how long. I don't. I don't know when. I'm going to get to do something like that again. Like, I don't know what, I don't, is it going to be a movie? Is it going to be like, I don't, whatever the first thing is, it'll be the first thing I can do. Like it'll be I'm a baseball be game. I'm happy for a socially distanced dance party. I will tell yeah. you that. Yeah. I just, I just want to be in a big room full of people cheering. I don't care what it's for. Like I go to a goddamn rodeo. Like I, I just, I just want to be around, uh, infectious enthusiasm in, and I think I, I worry about, um, how that will return i worry about the value of spaces that set that aside mm. and um how the the real estate market is going to be affected by that 
Um, oh yeah, because I'm working in independent businesses, theaters, yeah, like all the things they're the kinds of things, the kinds of places where the kinds of art that we want to see exists. Yeah, if if cities yeah. don't protect that space, nobody in their right mind is going to set it aside anymore, right? I mean, right. nobody's going to set any commercial space over. Period. Right, like, we have to fight for these things, just like people yeah. had to fight for parks in San Francisco. Yeah. Right. You know, it's yeah. like they will develop every last thing. Yeah, the bottom floor of. I mean, they will they will destroy the air. Right. They will de develop every inch of land. Like there's no, yeah, there's no floor. There's no. They they will just develop everything. It's it really is yeah. a, a fight, a tooth and nail fight ahead to like choose the things to pick the battles. You know. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I I worry. I yeah, worry about I worry that too. stuff. But I also, I I know that um, you know the community will figure it out. At least yeah. our 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 smaller definition of that that we both oh, belong to. Sure. I mean, people people are amazing. That's the one you know. Yeah. People are incredible. I love people. You know? <laughs> Who knew? No, but I mean, really, like, people people are great. They're smart. They're funny. Like. Yeah. I don't, you know, I, on this, I think most people are excellent. I think it's just these, like, what, what we see is that, like, the, it's just a pyramid that keeps going down on everybody. Like, yeah. it just doesn't do something else with the structure. This is the thing that's got to go. Because most people don't want it. Yeah. You know? Um, so I think it's a good time to just reflect on what we do want both for our own lives and, and, and see the relationship between that and, and the broader picture. And like, we've just been so mechanized through capitalism to just keep machining forward, even though we don't want this. So yeah, maybe, maybe something else, but yeah, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better, but it could get a lot better. And so that's, that's where I'm, that's the well. Yeah. Uh, is that our time? Did our show end? That's our time. Uh, it was so great to talk to you. Thank you so much for you participating in this. And I can't wait to hear more about your projects. We should have a, a follow-up phone call so I can get more excited yes. about stuff. Yes. Uh, I, I would love a, a follow-up phone call so we could actually... The things I didn't want to say to the interwebs and wasn't ready, I can tell you more specifically. Yeah. Well, and also <laughs> and also, I hope that this, uh, this little episode can st uh, stand as a little marker of your feelings today and uh, oh your attitudes God. isn't that exciting no it's terrifying i like i get uncomfortable <laughs> with anything that happens like three weeks ago so. <laughs> well uh well we'll we'll see we'll see what happens uh i hope i hope you did yourself justice i i'm I pretty confident I, was honest. I mean i just tried to be honest <laughs> so it was great thank you for swerving around with me in this in this world i'll talk to you soon Okay, thank you so much. I'll yep. talk to you soon. Thanks for having me and making me a guest. Yep, you got it. Hopefully right. next time. Congrats on your idea. Thank you. It's a good one. Well, thank you, uh, Clem Goldberg, and uh, thank you for watching this episode of This New Idea. Um, I will be back uh, next episode with Steffi Drews, writer from Oakland, um, curator of a long ago writing series um ex-collaborator and um somebody i really respect and can't wait to talk to so uh until then um thank you for joining me on this new idea